Hello, Harville Hendricks here. And Helen. And we are delighted to come to you with some uh, congratulations to Gaspar and all the Imago therapists in Romania and all other people who, uh, whom we are privileged to have as readers and to bring our greetings to you regarding uh, doing Imago relationship therapy in the space between. I just want to say, Gaspar, we think about you more than you know. We were so thrilled uh, to be in your country once and meet the therapist at that mm -hmm. time. And uh, we keep hearing how the community is growing and growing. Oh. And it's a real honor that you have requested a video from us because we really do think of you often. Yes, yes, we do. And, uh, and we also hear about you and from you often. So what we want to uh, say is that we are delighted that this book has been changed into this book uh, as a result of Gaspar's creative and entrepreneurial abilities. And we want to it thank you four, very much. It took four hands to hold up the book. It took four hands to hold up the book. <laughs> but anyway, it's, it's, it's a powerful it's, book. It's, so it's, it's sort of a heavy book. So uh, so what what is this book? And I think one way to say this book is, in fact, a summary of our uh, intellectual life. Uh -huh. And that it uh, took us 10 years uh, to do this. And the 10 years were off and on because uh, things kept slipping and changing. And uh, what what we became aware of as the book evolved is that we had evolved a new paradigm called the relational paradigm out of our work with couples. And that paradigm was replacing the individual paradigm, which was the paradigm that was useful in psychotherapy, but not useful in couples therapy. So we had evolved this uh, relational paradigm and it was rooted in our clinical experience, but not in the science. And Helen's going to talk a little bit about that. Well, as Harville is saying that a psychotherapy uh, rooted in Newtonian physics and before that, um, Dr. Freud was a medical doctor, the founder of psychology, uh, had his throughout his life treated diseases with um, named a disease and then done a treatment and everything was left brain left brain left brain and um, and rooted in in particle Newtonian physics and lo and behold there's another physics that Harville and I um, even when we were dating um, we had both read something called the Tao of Physics. It was the first um, book for the layperson that, <laughs> this is the layperson, uh, that explains quantum. And quantum is a little hard to understand. This was our second copy <laughs> that's 40 years old now. But basically, um, this whole idea that um, um, particle wave duality, um, a couple is attracted to each other and one of them, it might be more particle-like, uh, left brain, mm -hmm. and one more wave-like. And um, But basically, the, the quantum understanding of the world is completely different than, um, than the Newtonian physics one. And this book is unique to the field of, of psychotherapy. There's never been a book like this. Yes, uh, because psychotherapy was based on psychology, which was rooted in the atomistic theory of, of Newton, who believed that everything is made of atoms and all the atoms are separate. And the atom became the model to develop the self, which became then a psychological self. And it was important that people become autonomous, independent, self-sufficient, differentiated, and all the kinds of things that would go with a world uh, that could be described by classical physics as a world of everything being separate and independent and, and not essentially connecting. 
But we had worked with couples and found that that model of psychotherapy was not useful in helping couples actually achieve what they came to achieve, which was that they were interested in in the relationship. And we moved then to a study of relationship rather than into the interior life of the couples. And as we began to focus on the quality of their relationships and how to change the way they interacted with each other, we became aware that their relationship between them was more important than their interior life in terms of the uh, quality of their relationship with each other. So out of that, we evolved what we call uh, a focus on relationship as primary and real and developed a, a relational paradigm, which to replace the individual paradigm. But what we discovered was there was no science for the relational paradigm like there was for the individual paradigm. So Helen uh, reminded me somewhere along the way of struggling with this manuscript (laughs) that we had read uh, uh, lay versions of quantum physics, both of us, long ago. In fact, Helen uh, had read it actually before I did and was talking about it. So we reopened uh, the question or opened the possibility that maybe quantum physics could be the new science for therapy. So we looked at it and we found, behold, lo and behold, that in quantum field theory, which uh, has evolved uh, in recent decades, there is an assumption quite in contrast to uh, new, the Newtonian assumption of the separateness of atoms. There is an assumption that the world is made of atoms, but all the atoms are intrinsically connected and are interacting with each other all the time, and their interaction determines what they are and what they actually become. And so what we saw in looking at that is a perfect science for the relational paradigm, and therefore began to rethink imagotherapy uh, in its relationship to individualism and to psychology, and move it toward um, a science that's rooted in the quantum field, in which Helen mentioned that the quantum field is the background, this the source out of which all particles come. So that uh, is essentially the polarity that gives birth to the self. and But the field, the relationship, is real and foundational, and the self is a derivative and transient. So we uh, began to redo uh, Imago therapy and discovered um, with great joy, at least I did, that we actually had a working model of therapy that was uh, for uh, that 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 didn't need all that much tinkering with, by looking at it through the lens of uh, connecting. It's just that we, as we look through the lens of quantum field theory, we would focus on interconnectivity mm-hmm. rather than on the subjectivity of the individual selves. So that led. Uh, it was a long and arduous journey, but that led to what we now see as a systematic presentation of Imago relationship therapy and theory and as a as for clinicians. And uh, what I think we would say is that if you don't really want to read some really heavy stuff, skip chapter one and two uh, and go on to chapters three and four, which are the clinical theory and clinical practice. Um, but if you want to know why we do what we do, you have to read chapters one. And, and you don't know that I'm going to say this because I really not wanted Harville to do most of this, but this guy, you don't like me to say this, but I'm going to say it, is a genius at simplifying the complex. He says, Helen, don't say genius. Suck it up. He, he takes something complicated and simplifies it where you can understand <laughs> it. And this energy feel, the space between, he goes, you know, when the energies feel safe, people connect. If there's anxiety in the space between, connections ruptured. Right. Four things create safety. That's the book. So <laughs> and, and so safety in the field, which is an energy field, is the prerequisite 
for the possibility of reconnecting and reconnecting is the healing process that repairs the primal injury of disconnection and rupture. So that's what the book is. We hope you will work your way through it. We hope you will, if you're not an Imago therapist, will want to become one. If you are an Imago therapist, we hope that you will really enjoy having this available for you. And we look forward and hope someday to be able to see you again face to face. In the meantime, we wish you well, and we will see you down the path. Thank you for being in our world. Transforming the world one couple at a time. Amen.